The ground just beneath our feet is teeming with biological activity. The vast majority of carbon on Earth is found underground. It resides in inorganic forms such as carbonates and sedimentary rock, and in organic forms such as soil organic matter and deposits of coal, oil, and natural gas. Each year, soil microorganisms in a process known as decomposition break down about 2.5% of soil organic matter, converting the organic carbon to carbon dioxide that is subsequently released to the atmosphere. Roughly an equal amount of organic carbon returns to the soil through additions of animal and especially plant material, a process known as soil organic carbon sequestration. The balance between carbon decomposition and sequestration has a direct effect on atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. Evidence for this includes the prominent seasonal cycles of atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. Atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations decrease during the summer when photosynthesis and carbon sequestration exceeds respiratory decomposition and increase during the winter when the balance reverses. Will global climate change influence the relative rates of carbon sequestration and decomposition? If so, will this exacerbate or mitigate rising carbon dioxide levels? Net photosynthesis is relatively insensitive to temperature, but a longer growing season should enhance plant productivity and thereby accelerate soil carbon sequestration. Soil carbon sequestration, however, may not keep pace with soil carbon decomposition because the activity of soil microorganisms responsible for decomposition increases exponentially with temperature. Release of additional carbon dioxide from soils is anticipated. Wetlands and permafrost soils soils frozen year-round at high latitudes contain large amounts of organic soil carbon. These high latitudes are likely to experience more extreme warming than the rest of the planet, and thus the labile pools of organic carbon in their soils will be subject to faster decomposition. Consequently, global climate models predict that by the later half of the 21st century, land masses will release more carbon dioxide than they absorb. As global maximum temperatures rise, heat waves are becoming more pronounced. Europe experienced the hottest summer on record in 2003, with average temperatures 3.5 degrees Celsius above normal. During a two-week period in August 2003, between 20 and 50,000 people died from heat-related causes. Simulations run on global climate models with and without climate factors that derive from human activities indicate that human-induced climate change more than doubled the risk of such an event in 2003. Under the warming anticipated during the next 40 years, similar heat waves will be a hundred times more likely to occur. In summary, number one, global warming is influencing the performance of many species. Number two, changing distribution of species will have major ecological and economic implications. Number three, changing distribution of diseases and heat stroke will influence human health and well-being.